All right, guys, what's up? Um, impromptu video. I want that maximum bokeh uh, f1.8. So I'm going to use an ND filter indoors. All for the bokeh, baby. Um, yeah, like I said before, impromptu video, I want to talk about something. Uh, Sony's releasing a new camera, if you guys didn't know. The ZV-E10 MK2. Uh, I'm going to be all over the place with this one. Don't know how long it's going to be. Just imagine it like friends having a conversation. Uh, that's pretty much all my videos. Because <laughs> I don't know how to do anything any other way. I'm not professional. I just turn on the camera and I just talk to it. Alright, let's talk about this. I'm very excited. Anytime Sony announces a new anything, I get very excited. Partly because I'm a fanboy and partly because I just think that the Sony ecosystem is amazing. The people that it brings together, yeah, just, just awesome. I've met so many nice people. Nice people, I actually don't know if they're nice. I've met so many amazing people online um, just through the use of Sony cameras. It's amazing. And um, the ZV line is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm a vlogger. The V in ZV stands for vlogging. The Z stands for Zimbabwe. Probably not. What does it stand for? Does anybody know? Put in the comment section if you know. But yeah, I've owned the ZV1. <laughs> Get this, okay, this is very weird. I've owned the ZV-1, the ZV-E10, the ZV-E1, which I'm filming with right now, um, and they're going to be releasing the ZV-E10 Mark II. Sony's just, uh, they've never been good at naming. It's weird. And you've seen it all the time from other influencers saying that, and it's true. They're terrible. I'm buying a mic tomorrow that's the CMB... E10 or something crazy like that. I don't even remember what it is, but I'm getting that tomorrow. I'm buying a second hand off a of dude. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's talk about this new camera that's coming out. Uh, I want to do some predictions. There has been some rumors already out, so I know some of the details. We're getting the new bigger battery for sure. That's what I'm. That's what I heard. I think. I don't even know if that's for sure. That's still a rumor, but I think that's a pretty good guess that we are going to be getting that, which is great. Uh, to me, bigger battery, not a deal maker, a deal breaker, at least for me anyway. Just carry around a few batteries. I think that the most important thing really is the internals of the camera. And the thing that the ZV-E10 suffered from most was the, um, what is that? Rolling shutter. It was just bad. So rolling shutter is when you move the camera around quickly, the background does this. If you purchase the ZV-E10 and that's what you're seeing in the background, that's rolling shutter and it's probably annoying you, right? Yeah. Anyway, they're going to address that with the new sensor. Uh, the new sensor is probably also going to address... Um, you're probably going to get 4K60. Uh, initially, I thought 4K120 was going to be in there as well. But it's such a small body that I think they're going to stay away from it. Because the higher frame rate... rate uh, blah, blah, blah. The higher frame rate you shoot, the more the camera heats up. So I think they're just gonna, they probably won't have that. And plus the crop on that is just gonna be ridiculous. The APS-C sensor is already super cropped in and then you crop in another 30, 40%. I mean, a 16 millimeter lens like this is probably gonna be like, hello, how are you doing? You're not gonna be able to do anything with that unless you stand far back. I guess it's a moot point, it doesn't matter. It depends on how far you stand away from the subject anyway. But I don't think it's gonna have that just because of the overheating. All right, I'm gonna go on record as saying that and keeping costs down and all that stuff as well. Um, it's also probably gonna be a 10-bit camera, which is great, with the S-Log3, it's gonna be phenomenal. Another thing that I'm predicting is that they're gonna uh, allow you to uh, embed the, the LUT straight uh, into the camera, uh, if anything, for preview. So what that is, is um, right now the ZV-10 can't do that. Uh, the ZV-1, the ZV which I'm filming with now, that's what I'm using right now. Uh, I'm using a LUT straight on uh, to preview so I know exactly what my exposure is so what I see on the screen there is pretty accurate to when I put it on my computer and when I edit it when I throw the LUT on it's gonna look exactly like that and that is a deal maker for me that's the only reason why my stuff looks the way it does without this I wouldn't be able to shoot an S-Log3 because I don't use meters I just don't I don't get them I don't understand how to use them so I just embed blah, blah. so I just embed the LUT right onto the screen and um, that's what you're getting. I think it's gonna have that. Um, initially, I thought that it would have the AI chip in there, but I don't think it's gonna have that in there. They're gonna, because they're trying to cut cost. That's um, additional cost. The, what the AI chip does is it allows, um, what is that thing called? 
dynamic, no, auto framing, which is what I'm using right now, which is, doesn't seem to be working, but when I move my head away, when I come back, nope, it's not working. Okay, so it's not, the AI isn't that smart. So maybe AI won't take over the planet because it doesn't seem to be doing it. I really want it to work, but anyway. The auto framing, what it does is um, it crops in on the subject without losing any resolution and it's able to move as I'm moving. So it looks like somebody's controlling the zoom and the, um, the uh, it's some, it looks like somebody's controlling the camera from behind the screen and it's following the subject. It's very awesome actually. Um, I don't see it used enough. It's very situational. I think that people who would get a lot of use out of it would be like maybe um, a chef who's doing like an instructional, like you know, cook with this chicken, whatever, or like um, a karate instructor. Or if you were like a science professor doing a presentation and you were moving around and about the stage and the camera's following you, that's where I think it would be useful. Other than that, it's pretty useless, especially for vlogging, because you're always in front of the camera anyway, you're never gonna use it. Hey, it's working. And all of a sudden it decides to work. And this is what I mean. And this is also what I mean by this video is gonna be all over the place, but like, I don't think this technology is going to be in the new camera um, because if it was, it's just going to be way expensive. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's those are my predictions. I think it's going to be, so we're going to get the bigger battery, new sensor, which is going to enable uh, 4K60. Um, it's also going to fix the rolling shutter, which is great for everybody. And 10-bit. Um, and I think that's all you need. I think that's going to make ZVE10 um, users very happy, happy enough to upgrade. I think it's a worthy upgrade. Right now, I have a hard time recommending the ZVE10 um, to people because they would ask, I'm coming from my phone, and if I got the ZVE10, would it make my footage look better? Yeah, it would, but you have to do so much work to it. You have to put it through Catalyst Browse, stabilize the footage, color correct it and all this stuff, and of course it's going to look like a, like a freaking movie. But in the past, I would never recommend the ZV-10 just because of the rolling shutter and just the amount of work you have to do to make the footage look good. I would just say, just use the iPhone. But if the ZV-E10 MK2 um, has those improvements with the rolling shutter control, 10-bit, um, all these things, um, then I think I would have zero, zero apprehensions uh, recommending it to people as their first vlogging camera or even a B camera to the to a more capable camera like the FX3, the FX30, the ZV1, things like that. Um, let's see, what else am I talking about? I have zero interest in it, to be honest. I can't see it being better than the ZV, the ZV1, which I'm filming with right now, or the ZVE1. Um, the thing that would make me buy it is, okay, this is really left field per, um, prediction, but Sony has been known to get crazy and do stupid things, or not stupid things, but crazy things. If, you know how Fuji cameras are so popular right now, shooting beautiful JPEGs straight out of camera because they have those um, recipes, which are essentially like creative filters. Every camera has them, but they just, they just suck on every other camera. Fuji, for some reason, knows how to do it because they take like vintage film looks and embed them into the film. So the, the JPEGs that come straight out of these Fuji cameras look amazing. They come out of the camera, you upload it, you email it to yourself. Why did I say email like that, email? Um, you email it to yourself and um, you post it on Instagram and people are like, oh my God, you're a photographer. No, I just have a Fuji camera. Um, if they allow that for the ZV-E 10 Mark II, but not film uh, recipes, but movie recipes. So what I'm saying is they allow you to embed the LUTs uh, straight onto photographs. So you have this 24 megapixel. I don't even know what the megapixel on this camera is going to be. Let's assume it's 24 megapixels. 24 megapixels with the LUT applied on top. Uh, where Fuji is going to have like a photo that looks vintage. Sony's ZV-E 10 Mark II will have photos that look like they're ripped from a movie. How freaking awesome would that be? And now you're probably saying, why don't you just take screen grabs from your videos? Well, I do do that, and I've done that. I've, po I've done that and I've posted it on Instagram. People are like, whoa, that looks like it's from a movie. That's amazing, you're an amazing photographer. But I'm like, no, it's cheating. Problem with that is that those photos are very low res because they're, scra they're grabbed from the video, which is low res, like 4K is really not that high res. You couldn't print that. This would instantly make me buy the new camera, and I would cancel my pre-order for the Fuji X100 
Mark III. I don't even know what it is. It's a long, confusing name. But that camera, you know that camera that's always on back order, it's very popular. I would cancel the, I would cancel my pre-order for that and just go with the Sony, um, the new Sony camera. Um, what else? I know that's a crazy thing, right? That's a crazy thing I just said there. But if they did that by some miracle, let's put it this way: if my prediction comes true, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a ZV-E10 Mark II and just give it away on my channel. That's what I'm gonna do. That's how confident I am of this thing actually happening. It's not gonna happen, guys. Um, Another thing that might make me purchase this camera is aesthetics. If the camera is redesigned, if it looks great, if it has like silver bevels or something like that, because I love silver and black together. Um, if they make it look retro, if they make it look like the Fuji X100 series cameras, um, then I would buy it because I'm a sucker for like fancy stuff. Just that's all. Yeah, those two things would be so crazy. If they managed to do two of those things, I'd be like, Ah, it'd be the best thing ever. But yeah, impromptu video. It kind of went a bit long. Um, 11 minutes, not bad. Um, but yeah. Okay, guys, watch my other videos too on Muay Thai. I know it's a it's a whole niche change, but um, I'm really happy with it. I'm, I'm proud of it. I think they're very cool. Um, watch them. Give that thumbs up. Okay, guys, I'll see you guys later. Let me know what your predictions are and if you're excited. Put in the comments section if you think I'm crazy. But I think it's pretty safe to assume that we're getting the bigger battery, 10-bit, better sensor that's going to improve everything on the camera. And, oh, um, what do I think the price is going to be? I think if they are able to upgrade all these things, the price is going to be a bit higher, maybe $100 to $200 higher than the current ZV-E10, which I think is completely reasonable. Okay, that's all. Uh, what are your predictions? Um, put it in the comments section below. I'll see you. Bye.